Hey, why should anyone believe the Easter story? Not that Easter story, this Easter story. Hey, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, my name is John Whitaker, and I've taught the Bible and theology at the college level for over 20 years, and I really want to help people understand the Bible, and I want to connect it to life because I believe the Bible ought to be blue jeans theology. And if that sounds like something that might be helpful to you, then I would encourage you to go ahead and click subscribe right now. And as far as this video goes, man, I would encourage you to stick around to the end because by the time we get to the end, I've got something super helpful for you that I think will help you understand why we ought to believe the Easter story. And in this video, we're gonna answer four questions about why the Easter story matters and why you should believe it. What difference should this story make in our life? The reality is, is we live in a world that's marked by death. Obviously physical death, statistically someone dies every 1.5 seconds somewhere in the world. And yet beyond just physical death, there's all the other ways that death seems to mark our world. Uh, the death of dreams and hopes. The death of maybe uh, life, the way it worked out wasn't the way you expected it to work out. The death that comes in the form of a broken marriage or uh, broken dreams or um, the death that comes from other kinds of broken relationships, the death that comes from disease as the disease ravages your body and leaves you unable to do the things you once used to enjoy. Death is just a reality in our world. And here's the thing, God knows all of that because God came to this world. God came to this world in the person of Jesus and he experienced all the death this world really has to offer. He experienced people being uh, confused by him and misunderstanding him and he experienced rejection, he experienced betrayal, he experienced being stabbed in the back by one of his closest friends, he experienced being beaten bloody and he experienced dying on a cross. Death. And he experienced it all. You see Jesus gave death home court advantage and he still beat death on its terms because the Easter story says that Jesus rose from the dead three days later and that Jesus now is King and Lord and, and where death once reigned, now life has triumphed and life prevails. That's why the Easter story matters. That's the difference the Easter story is supposed to make is that in a world marked by death, life has broken in. Now let's be honest, even though I'm a pastor and a theologian, it hasn't always been easy for me to believe the Easter story. And after all, when was the last time you were at a funeral and the dead person came back to life? It doesn't happen very often, does it? In fact, I was in graduate school studying theology and I had sort of a crisis of faith. I really began to wrestle with, man, how do we know this is even true? I was reading books from all sorts of different backgrounds. I was having conversations with people who were raising all sorts of questions. And it just really struck me as, man, we can barely know what happened five years ago, 10 years ago. How can we know what happened 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, particularly when that story involves someone coming back to life after they've been crucified? And so here's what I did. I grabbed a, a piece of notebook paper and I began just to kind of review why did I think this story was true and I noted things like well historians of all kinds believers and unbelievers all agreed that that tomb had to be empty or the story could have never got off the ground and those same historians of all kinds believers and unbelievers agreed that the disciples were convinced they saw Jesus alive after he had been crucified another one of the facts was people like the Apostle Paul Paul was a, a persecutor a violent opponent of the followers of Jesus and somehow he changed and became a proponent, a promoter of Jesus. And the only reason Paul gave was because he saw him alive. Jesus appeared to him after his resurrection. The apostles themselves were scared, hiding, cowardly, confused. And then all of a sudden they go from that to become bold proclaimers of the message about Jesus. What changed their life? Well, the only thing they said was, we saw him alive. He's risen from the dead. He's the Messiah. And they began to proclaim that. And so as hard as the Easter story was for me to believe, I concluded it must have happened. It happened because all the evidence in history pointed in that direction and only that direction. It was the only explanation that made sense of the data. And, and as I reviewed that evidence and began to write that down, what struck me was not just that we had this evidence, but that this evidence was so incredibly early. It, 
it happened right there in the very city where the events took place, not, not centuries after, not even decades after, but that was being proclaimed and lived out by those followers of Jesus in the days and weeks immediately following his death, burial, and resurrection. In fact, Paul himself, who had been a persecutor and an opponent but became promoter, he writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and then that he appeared to Cephas, another name for Peter, and then to the twelve, the twelve apostles, and after that he appeared to more than 500 brothers all at the same time, most of whom are still alive. Do you hear what the Apostle Paul said? Uh, he said that, I received this and I'm passing it on to you. Well, he's writing these words just 25 years after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He started this church, that's what he's referring to when he passed it on to them, five years before that, so that's only 20 years, and he says it's what he received. Well, when did he receive it? Well, he received it uh, at his conversion when he became a follower of Jesus, and that happened just three to four years after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and he received it from those who've been preaching it for those whole three and four years. In other words, there's no other story for how the church got going. It's not like you have a Christianity without the resurrection and a Christianity with the resurrection, and eventually over time, the one with the resurrection won out. No, there's only one story ever given for how Christianity got started, and it's the story of Easter. In the years that followed, I actually summarized the evidence that compelled me to become a follower of Jesus under the acrostic Easter. And this is what I think is so helpful to you. It makes it easy to remember. The first E stands for uh, the empty tomb that all historians agree that tomb had to be empty in Jerusalem or that story never could have ever gotten promoted and the church could have never gotten started. The A stands for appearances after the resurrection that the apostles saw Jesus alive, were convinced of that, and that's what compelled them to change their life. The S stands for skeptics converted. Uh, I'm thinking primarily of the apostles Apostle Paul and how he went from a, a persecutor to a promoter of Jesus and Jesus being the Messiah, but also people like James, Jesus' brother, who was a skeptic and became one of the leaders in the Jerusalem church. The T stands for transformed apostles, that the apostles went from these cowards who were confused to these bold proclaimers of Jesus as Messiah and Lord. The second E stands for the existence of the church. As one scholar says, the existence of the church rips a resurrection-sized hole into history because the resurrection is the only explanation for how that thing got started. And then the R stands for the rite or the ritual of baptism. Um, that right from the beginning, literally on day one, uh, they were practicing baptism. And baptism is this, this symbolic act of identifying with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You go down into the water and you're, it's like you're buried and then you're raised out of the water like you're resurrected. And that was explained by them as a way of uh, embodying and identifying with Jesus' resurrection. So all of the evidence points in one direction and only one direction, that Jesus rose from the dead, that the Easter story is true. And so when it comes to the purpose of life, the point of life, man, I think it just makes sense that we should go with the one who rose from the dead.